Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Nailus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our physiology playlist. In previous videos, we have talked about cell membrane physiology today. Let's start talking about the autonomic nervous system and let's get started. So go to YouTube, go to Medicosis, go to my playlists and go to the physiology playlist. Video number one through number 25, we have talked about introduction, cell membrane physiology, transport such as simple diffusion, active transport, vesicular transport, primary active, secondary active, osmosis, osmotic pressure, osmolality, osmolarity, measured osmolality, calculated osmolality. We have talked about the fixed principle and the Donnan's equilibrium and we did a review. Video number 26 is this one and we'll talk about the introduction to the autonomic nervous system. After we finish the autonomic nervous system, we will have a review. And after this, there will be a premium course about pharmacology of the autonomic nervous system on my website, medicosisperfectionalist.com. Half of the pharmacology textbook hinges around concepts discussed here. If you want to be a great doctor, you got to master pharmacology. And you will never master pharmacology if you're bad at physiology. C'est impossible. It ain't gonna happen, baby. Rule number one in neuro, the easiest yet the most forgotten. You draw an imaginary line in your brain. Anything in front of it is motor. Anything behind it is sensory. It's as simple as that. You can do the exact same thing to the spinal cord. Imaginary line, anything in front of it is motor. Anything behind it is sensory. Many a student graduate medical school without grasping this basic fact. These students are gonna stumble through life and they will need psychotherapy. You don't believe me? Consider this. This is your primary somatosensory cortex. Have you noticed it's behind the line? Yes, and that's why it's sensory. Duh. How about the primary motor cortex? It's motor and it's in front of the line. And that's why it's motor. No kidding. So, when you touch something hot, how do you feel the heat? Primary somatosensory cortex. Okay, you want to contract your biceps. How does it happen? Primary motor cortex. You're watching this video right now and you are seeing the screen. This is primary visual cortex and of course that's a sensation. However, moving your eyes up and down to the left and to the right, that's it's a motor function and that's why the frontal eye field is anterior while the primary visual cortex is posterior. I'm talking right now, talking, that's Broca's area, but you are understanding me. Understanding me is a sensation and this is Wernicke's area. Broca is anterior because it's motor. Wernicke is posterior because it's sensory. Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Spinal cord, let's go. This is called the dorsa root ganglia. Do you think it's sensory or motor? Follow the rule. This is the line. This is behind the line. Therefore, it's sensory. Yes, it's gonna carry sensation from your fingertips, such as heat sensations, and they will convey the message into the central nervous system, in this case, the spinal cord. All right, this is somatic nerve fiber starting here at the anterior horn cell. Do you think this is motor or sensory? Follow the rule. We are in front of the line, therefore this is motor. This is an autonomic fiber starting from the lateral horn cell. Here, do you think this is motor or sensory? It is motor. And here is a very important rule for you. Autonomic nervous system is always motor. It is never sensory. If I ever hear that you have said something sensory and autonomic, I'll smack your gluteal region, metaphorically speaking. Sensory is never autonomic and autonomic is never sensory. No exceptions. These 13 questions are the best. If you're able to answer them right now, you do not need to watch my videos. If, however, you're not able to answer them, then you need a medicosis in your life. Let's start. Question number one. There are more somatic nerve fibers than autonomic nerve fibers. For instance, you have 12 pairs of cranial nerves plus 31 pairs of spinal nerves. 12 plus 13. I'm sorry, I suck at math. 2 plus 1 is 3. 1 plus 3 is 4. 43 pairs of somatic nerves in your body. The autonomic ones are way less than this. Let's start by the parasympathetic. We have craniosacral. We have four cranial nerves and this is 1973. So three, seven, nine, and 10. These happen to be four nerves. Plus a pelvic splanchnic nerve or a pelvic nerve and that's one. We have five nerves right here. 
How about the sympathetic? It's thoracolumbar. We have 12 pairs in the thorax and about two to three pairs in the lumbar area. 12 plus two equals 14. Five plus 14 equals about 19 pairs of autonomic nerves. 19 versus 43 somatic. Why is that? Why more somatic nerve fibers than autonomic? Do you know why? Of course not, that's why I'm here. There are more sympathetic nerves than parasympathetic ones. Have you noticed the sympathetic? Oh yeah, there were 14, but the parasympathetic were five if you count the pelvic nerve as one. If you count it as three, then you have like seven. Still, 14 is greater than seven. You have more sympathetic than parasympathetic. Why? Number three, the somatic nerves exit via the anterior horn cells in the spinal cord, but the autonomic ones exit via the lateral horn cells. Why? Cranial autonomic nerves are parasympathetic fibers, you know, three, seven, nine, and 10. Yeah, these are cranial autonomic, but there are no sympathetic fibers originating from the brain. Why not? Five, there are lateral horn cells in the thoracolumbar area, but there are no lateral horn cells in the sacral area. Why not? Question number six. Somatic nerves have A fibers, the best, while autonomic ones have B and C fibers. What is the cause? Seven. Somatic fibers do not relay in ganglia. Why not? Sympathetic fibers have cervical ganglia, even though sympathetic fibers are only thoracolumbar. Why the flip? Do they need ganglia in the cervical area? Nine. Lateral sympathetic ganglia, also known as the sympathetic chain, are 12 in the thorax, but only three in the cervical area. Why only three? 10. Collateral sympathetic ganglia. These are celiac, superior mesenteric, and inferior mesenteric. They follow the blood vessels. The celiac will follow the celiac trunk. The superior mesenteric will follow the superior mesenteric artery. The inferior mesenteric will follow the inferior mesenteric artery. Not only this, the sympathetic nerve fibers are embedded within the wall of the blood vessel. Why? Parasympathetic preganglionic fibers relay in terminal ganglia inside the wall of the target organ, such as your stomach. Why? 12. Sympathetic preganglionic fibers cannot relay in a ganglia inside the target organ. Why not? 13. And the last question. Postganglionic parasympathetic fibers, they secrete acetylcholine. We all know this. But those of the sympathetic postganglionic fibers secrete norepinephrine. We know that. However, when the sympathetic was supplying sweat glands, it did not use the neurotransmitter of the sympathetic. Instead, it borrowed the acetylcholine from the parasympathetic. Isn't that weird? Why? After you watch my videos on autonomic nervous system, you will be able to answer these questions, unlike your professor. Nervous system is divided into central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system is in the center, consists of brain on top and spinal cord here. Peripheral nervous system is anything coming out of the central nervous system, such as cranial nerves, they come out of the brain, and spinal nerves, they come out of the spinal cord. Anatomy versus physiology. What is the structural unit of the central nervous system? The building block is the neuron, but the functional unit is the reflex arc, and this consists of a stimulus followed by an afferent sensory fiber that goes to the spinal cord. And then we have a center. The center is in the central nervous system, in this case, the spinal cord, followed by an efferent motor fiber that's gonna supply an effector organ. And that is the reflex arc. Stimulus, receptor, afferent, center, efferent, effector. Central nervous system, brain and spinal cord, the brain has the cerebrum, the cerebellum, and the brainstem. The brainstem has three parts, midbrain, pons, and medulla. The spinal cord has cervical area, thoracic area, lumbar area, sacral area, and coccygeal area. The peripheral nervous system, cranial nerves, these are 12 pairs. Some of them are sensory, some of them are motor, some of them are mixed. Spinal nerves are 31 pairs. All of them are mixed. And we have eight nerves in the cervical area. And here you gotta be very careful. When we talked about the vertebral column, bone, how many bones did we have in the cervical area? We had only seven vertebrae, but eight cervical nerves.
That's a huge difference. Thoracic, 12. Lumbar, 5. Sacral, 5. Coccygeal, only one nerve, but four vertebrae. The somatic nervous system is under your conscious control. Autonomic is not. You cannot control it. It's involuntary. Somatic could be motor or sensory, but please never ever forget that autonomic is only motor. What do we mean by a mixed nerve? A mixed nerve contains motor plus sensory plus or minus autonomic. So now I understand the autonomic nervous system, which is involuntary. Can you give me a stinking definition? Yeah. Autonomic nervous system is a part of the nervous system, no kidding, which regulates the bodily functions that are not under conscious control. In other words, autonomic is automatic, is involuntary. It's like manual transmission versus automatic transmission in your car. The autonomic nervous system is divided into, oh, I know medicosis, sympathetic and parasympathetic. That's it. Shut up. This is okay if you are a high school student, but if you want to be a good doctor, we have three parts, sympathetic, parasympathetic, and enteric. Oh, enteric? Yeah, in your GI tract. Oh, the myenteric plexus and the submucosal plexus. Even if you cut the vagus, even if you cut the sympathetic chain, your gut has its own nervous system. Your gut has its own brain, so to speak. And that's why people always talk about their gut feelings, no pun intended. Okay, do you know the cranial nerves? Yeah, I know them. Here's a question for you. Do you consider them central nervous system or peripheral nervous system? Oh, since these cranial nerves are inside the skull, therefore they are part of the central nervous system. Shut up. This is not the rule. Who cares about the skull? What kind of a person are you? A forensic pathologist? Listen here, my friend. The central nervous system is only two things brain and spinal cord. Anything that comes out of the brain or out of the spinal cord is, by definition, peripheral nervous system. So cranial nerves, peripheral nervous system. Spinal nerves, peripheral nervous system. You want an embryology tip? Yeah, if you are part of the central nervous system, therefore you are part of the neural tube. But if you are part of the peripheral nervous system, you came from the neural crest. Cranial nerves and spinal nerves are peripheral nervous system. And here's a case for you. This is question number nine. To get the previous question, check out my playlist called Physiology. They are in order. Okay, 49-year-old male present with symptoms of weakness, inability to focus, memory problems, difficulty speaking, tremors of his fingers and lips. He also complains of irritability and headaches. His mother says that he is no longer himself. And he's acting weirdly and seems confused. He vividly recalls that two years ago, he had a painless ulcer on his pee-pee and painless large lymph node in the groin area both of which resolved on their own, and that's why he did not seek medical attention. Then six weeks later, after the resolution of the ulcer, he developed rash on his trunk, palms, and soles, as well as large lymph nodes all over his body. He admits visiting prostitutes at least once a month. His disease affected the posterior column of the spinal cord, as well as the dorsal root ganglion. The question is, which of the following symptoms are likely to be seen in this patient? And here are your choices. First of all, what's the diagnosis? Let me know the answer in the comment section. But hey, medicosis, I've never studied pathology before. How do you expect me to know all of this? Stop complaining and start thinking. It's really easy. If you want to learn more about pharmacology, specifically antibacterials, antivirals, antifungals, and antiparasitic, Check out my website called medicosisperfectionalist.com. I have a premium antibiotics course with 40 videos. And if you have answers to these questions, let me know in the comment section. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to get my antibiotics course. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalist, where medicine makes perfect sense.